right, welcome, welcome, everyone. This is the First Class Life podcast where we learn to thrive in life. You know, um, I got a special guest today. He's going to he's gonna bring it, you know, a lot on the, the mindset and kind of like how we should grow our businesses and how we should think differently. You know, one of my core beliefs is, you know, I believe that you'll never out own out own your own personal development. Um, so, I mean, that's key into my life. Today, I've got a guest, Brad Young. Um, he, he's got books out. He's an author. He speaks. He uh, helps business. He consults with businesses and help them grow and stand and stay in the profit instead of the negative. So, Brad, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name's Brad Young. I'm here from Jackson area. I've been a business coach for about a decade. I work with venture capital groups in transportation, software, and technology for many years. I also like coach local small businesses, but I also coach businesses on a global scale with the venture capital groups and uh, I have a book out called Change. It's Communication, Habits, Attitude, Network, Goals, and Education. It's about self-improvement. You can apply to your business, life, and anything that, you know, things set your mind to. I mean, you can utilize the principles to be able to reach your goals. I love that because, you know, like that is one of my core beliefs is the personal development and your attitude, it, it dictates your future and how successful you are. Um, I believe anything can be learned. Um, you just got to put forth the effort and you can do anything if you want to. Um, so I, I kind of led with one of my beliefs. Um, what's something that you believe in strong about? I believe we are our own worst enemies. I agree with that. I agree with that. Go a little bit more deeper into that. Well, I mean, we continually self-sabotage ourselves on a daily basis. Yep. You know, we don't follow schedules. You know, we don't we don't put the effort in that we need. People don't even make a plan that people don't write down their goals. They don't plan for anything. It's just kind of a um, it's kind of like a, I want to drive 100 miles an hour instead of starting off at 15 miles an hour. Right now, what you're going to do, drive steady where you actually can accomplish something instead of driving 100 and just going swerving through the track. You're not going to get anything accomplished yeah. going that fast. Yeah, it's almost like, you know. Uh, most of us live life, especially uh, business owners, more in the reactive than proactive. Um, and we, and a lot of times, you know, I come from the real estate industry where I would say probably 95% of agents are all reactive and they don't have clarity on, on what they're trying to really accomplish in the day. Um, I know at our, in our office, I always say, what is the, the one thing that you do today? If you couldn't do anything else, you know, it would make it a successful day. And, and for us, it would be uh, having a qualified appointment with a buyer or seller that's qualified, you know, getting face to face, meeting them and having a, co a good conversation about them, uh, about what their goals are and what their needs are in the real estate, in, in the business. You know, how can we help them and, and putting an offer out for them to be our clients? You know, that's our, the one thing for us that we should be doing every day. And all our activities should lead up to that, should align to that. Exactly. That's actually that's that's it. Sit here on my desk. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. You know, and that one thing is, you know, what's the most important thing in your day? What's you know, yep. what's your objective? Is you know, to make revenue, to make a sale. Yep. How are you going to get there? You know, just like with anything, it's uh, you know, it's following. You know, it's following. A, you know, a pattern, having a rhyme or a reason. You know, not to not sabotage yourself. It's like a okay. Give you good, another good example of sabotaging yourself. I see a lot of new people at the gym at the end of the year. They're going in and I mean, just absolutely tearing it up. But then I see them pulling at McDonald's or they pull in a fast food restaurant and have to leave. I mean, you know, you're sabotaging yourself. You know, or they're not preparing, not stretching, you know, going too hard without being, you know, without being prepared. You know, we, we uh, unfortunately, we just, we do it to ourselves. It's like me when I get out of rhythm personally it affects everything in my life, you know, and if I stay in a rhythm, I'm okay. If I'm up at 4.30, getting things done, by noon, I've got more done than most people have all day, already by then, because that's my rhythm. Everybody can't have that same rhythm, but, you know, just the, the self-sabotage, it's just, it's it's unbelievable. You know, financially, people, you know, they, they don't think about what they're doing to themselves. They don't think about anything long term. It's only, you know, I gotta have this right now. I need the new iPhone versus, you know, what can I invest in myself? Because so you're, you're self sabotaging and then not investing in yourself, not investing in coaching, not investing in self development, not 
reading and doing the things that I know, Matt, you do, mm-hmm. but a lot of people don't think about those things, you know, about how much time you need to invest in yourself because, you know, it's, it's kind of like not maintenance in a car, you yeah. know, eventually, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's going to be disabled if you continue to, to drive that car and you don't take care of their maintenance, change the oil, don't do anything productive. And, and you know, that's going to help extend the life of the vehicle. That's why people that are my age at 44, they look 20 years older Yep. because they didn't maintenance their vehicle. Yep. That's, I mean, that's a hundred percent true. Like you, you know, and I, and I think it comes back to clarity. You don't have them clarity of what they want, you know, um, you know, having clarity, you know, you're, like you said, you got to maintain your, your mind, your mind is a muscle and you've got to feed it, you know, what you feed it, you know, is what it concentrates. So if you're feeding it negative, if you're watching the news and everything on the news is negative and our country is about to explode, then that's all you're going to think about. Cause that's all you're going to see. Um, whether you feed it, you know, that how grateful you are for the day, how grateful you are for your family, for the things that you have, um, you know, you're going to look for more things to be grateful for, and you're going to have a more positive outlook in life versus the negative outlook. If all you pay attention to is the news and negative things and, and you go about life as a victim and everything else. Um, so, I mean, that's just, I mean, you've got your mental muscle, you've got your, uh, you know, physical, your body, you know, how do you exercise, stay in shape? What are you fueling it with? And then you've got your spiritual too. I mean, you know, uh, your spiritual belief, whatever that might be. I mean, that's part of our um, existence. And it has been from the day one of time. That's part of our lives. Um, and then you've got like your relationships too. Are you feeding your relationships to make them better? Or are you just kind of winging it and then kind of wondering why bad things are happening in your relationship? Right on. And that's where I feel the most is in, you know, interpersonal relationships. Yep. Used to be traveling, being gone, and so not even used to having that, you know, in the distance, you know, with our, you know, social distancing, people aren't getting out, aren't doing the same things. It's, I'll tell you, that's where I self sabotage myself. Yep. And so that's the, you know, the one thing about, you know, all what we do, you know, you got to evaluate yourself. And I know for a fact that's one thing I do continually. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, because I'd rather talk to you like me and you were, you were talking right now versus, you know, sending you a message on Facebook or whatever, yep, you know, or any kind of social media. I'm just, you know, I'm more of an in-person kind of, per- you know, yeah, that's why I like to go speak in front of people. You know, it's like, it's, it's different. You know, I do Zoom calls and things continually, but it's, you know, but I self-sabotage myself in, in that manner for sure. Uh, yeah, really- um, I'm, I fall victim to that too. Um, if you ask my wife, she would probably tell you that 90% of the time I don't think about it is like business, business strategies. Um, cause for me, that gives me energy. I, I like to think, uh, more strategic, uh, and that gives me energy. And so a lot of times I fall victim at the house is I'm at the house with my family and my girls and I'm thinking business and what's the next great thing I can implement in the business to help it grow, um, make us more profitable and everything else, what I should be doing instead, I should be focusing on them while I'm there with them. Um, cause that's, you know, that is an element of my life that I need to be, um, within and keep and, and continue to feed that element. So it grows too, you know, so I, I fall victim to that hugely. Um, so tell us about, I mean, I believe that, you know, you, your ego is your enemy. Um, you know, uh, somebody told me one time that, you know, a man's egos killed more men than cancer. Uh, and I probably believe, I a hundred percent believe that cause, um, all of us got egos and it's, it's, it really is a cancer in, in society because it makes us do things that we shouldn't do uh, and we know better, but it's, you know, we put up that, we just put our feet in the sand and we drag it because, because of, because of our ego. Um, so that's, you know, kind of leading down that path. How can we um, be self-aware enough to see that and kind of stop that in the tracks before we go down that, that path, you know, because we all have a path on every day. Uh, a decision we can either get up when our alarm clock gets tells us to get up or we can hit the snooze and it starts there you know how how we win the day in the morning you know do we exercise in the morning do we read in the morning what or do we just go watch tv in the morning um when we get to work uh do we do we just kind of slouch in five minutes late and then kind of play on our phone 
you know, for 15, 20 minutes and kind of, you know, and have no plan to go up the day or mission through the day, what I need to get done. Um, Cause I, you know, something I believe in is like, I would rather somebody work four hours a day and be highly focused and get more accomplished in that four hours than somebody to come in and work 15 hours a day, but doesn't really accomplish anything except for being there. I, I mean, being present. I mean, mm -hmm. You just said you hit it big time. I mean, and that's, you know, in our, our personal life and just people in general, you know, they're just not present. You know, I go into places now and I mean, it's just, it's baffling. Me. I mean, you know, these business owners let people, I've seen them, they're sitting there playing on their phone, like the owners are not, but the employees are playing on their phone, won't even wait on something. When yeah. I had to ask a, a, somebody to come the other day, I was being, you know, I was kind of being, I was joking, but I was just, you know, I asked them about, you know, what union they belong to, because all of a sudden it wasn't their job. Nothing was their job. They, you yeah. know, and where it used to be, hey, hey, Matt, come on in, hey, you know what, yeah. I can help you. You know what, that's not my department, but I can help you. So it's a, but it, but it was an, it's an ego thing there too, because all of a sudden it was like, a, it's an, you know. They feel entitled that I only work for this department instead of yeah. working for a company and being part of a team and a family. You know, they just started. That's not my. That's not my job. And sending me over, and so I kind of got a little. I got a little angry about it. So then when I started asking about asking those questions, I shouldn't have done that. So that's mm -hmm. where I failed. Shouldn't have done that. But it was a. It was a good learning lesson because, you know, I, number one, I figured out that, you know, that people have changed people not being focused, but it also goes to their leadership too and yep. not having them focused and being, you know, be, being on point, you know, making them understand and being clear and saying, okay, okay, Brad, you know, when somebody comes in here, you treat them well, you treat them like you want them here. You don't treat them like you could care less they can go down the street. Yep. So I get, and it, you know, it's just the personal ego though gets in, in all of our ways though yep. at a continual basis because, you know, the one thing that I, I figured out to be able to get past that sometime is to try to not be reactive. You know, you talked about earlier, but you kind of be proactive. I already know the, it's just like in sales. I already know what you're going to tell me, all the no's you're going to tell me, all the excuses, all the reasons. Yep. But to try to, to already, you know, thinking in my mind, okay, they're going to say no to this, but what can we agree on? How can we be agreeable? And being able to figure out how to do that because, just like you know, two people can you know can argue about things for hours after no you know for, and never accomplish anything. Yep. But there's always something we can agree on. There's yep. always something that people can agree on. So that's yeah, I mean, where, yeah. I mean, you're all I, to me. You're always like, for me as as my thought is like, you're always trying to create a win-win, no lose for the customer. Like, how can I create a scenario that's it is a hundred percent win for them? It's a win for us, but it's also a a, a guaranteed no lose for them. You know, and that's what you're trying to, you're trying to do. Take the risk off the customer and put it on you, on, on you as the business owner. And that's your offer. And then and see where that takes you. Now you've got to deliver on that, you know, and you've got to deliver highly. Um, but a lot of times I think people lose focus on what they're really doing. Um, and, and you said, I think you said it earlier, it's like the purpose of a business is to make a profit. I like, if you're going to put yourself through all this pain, to, to own a business because there's a lot of pain when you start a business you got to take a lot of risk uh you've got to manage people you got payroll customers um if you're going to put put yourself through all that you know you, you might as well make a profit on it and be successful and the more money the more money you make the more people you can help everything's a people business i mean everything's you know everything we do it's interpersonal it's, it's everything's a people business no matter what you do yep. you're in a people business I mean, if you, um, I don't, have you ever read the Zappos book? The, uh, yes, I, uh, delivering I happiness. It. So he, he talks about in the book, how, how, when they, they went away from, they went away from just trying to, to give a solid product and good. And then they, they went and kind of more to like, um, I call it the, you know, the surprise and delight, like, you know, when somebody would, you know, they start off as a shoe company, you know, just sending shoes. Basically, they were wholesaling shoes for other companies and they just come, people would order them off their site and they would send them to them. So when people would order them, you know, the standard back then, you know, it was like five to, you know, five to 10 business days to get your shoes. So they would automatically, people wouldn't even know it. They would have them two day delivery. So people were expecting it to be two weeks before they got their shoes and they get the second day and they wouldn't know. 
you know, and then, so they're surprised. And so they delivered happiness while it was top of mind, um, you know, and there's their, they took their customer service to another level and then they grew that business, you know, and they ended up selling for like a trillion dollars um, just because that one concept, there was nothing uh, unique about their, their business because anyone could have sold shoes to their website, you know, but what they did, you know, was, was made the journey of the, the consumer journey way better and actually listened to what the consumer wanted and, and delivered on that. Well, they, so they made so much money. Now, the owner was Tony something. I can't, I know what yeah. book you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So, all right. I wish I could remember the name of the neighborhood, but actually their house was, that was right down the street from the place I was staying out there near uh, Silicon Beach. I can't remember the name of the, the neighborhood, but I walked by it several times before they mm-hmm. sold that house. Yep. A, a guy actually lived, he lived right there. It was funny because it was a guy that owns Zappos. Yep. Yeah, he was a unique um you got you could tell by reading the book how he uh like he believed in like family and a in a close tribe. And cause that's how he was with all his friends and family. And then he created that same atmosphere in the culture within his business of of everyone, you know, they all worked together, they all took trips together, they all went out uh party together, you know, they were they were a big family. And then built he built that culture around family and delivering happiness to the consumer, um, which is which is a lot of what we're missing in in business now nowadays. You know, I think people don't see it. Um, it's all about either the owner, like you said, the owner's got the ego, they're self sided on yourself because they got an ego, which and a lot of times it's not. I don't know if it's their ego, but it's a lot of times they're under pressure of you know financing. They they're they don't know how to manage people. Um, you know, the e if you read the e that's probably my favorite business book and business book out there, but they generally were a technician in their business and they were good at their craft and they ended up starting a business themselves. And then the, now they become, you know, the technician, the manager and the visionary of the company. And they're in all three roles, but they can't get out of the technician role. So they end up micromanaging people and then they end up so frustrated because now, you know, they used to all they had to do was make a pie. You know, if you're a pie maker, now they got to make the pie, run the cash register, sweep the floor, do accounting, you know, pay rent, payroll and all these things. And they're super frustrated in that and they can't get out of that. Um, But like I said, it's it's a lot of that's their ego because they can't um, delegate tasks to other people to kind of help grow their business, you know, so they can concentrate on other areas of the business. I've dealt with so many owners like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I had a good friend, so, you know, it's so soft work. And same thing, I mean, you know, great at the development side, but, you know, people don't realize their weaknesses, the ego, yep. it doesn't, you know, and sometimes I'm just telling people, I'm like, you know what, you need to hire a salesperson. I've done to several people here recently, you know, yep. like, you got to hire somebody, you got to spend the money, for somebody, you know, you can develop yourself, but you know, you, you got to analyze those weaknesses. And like you said about building the tribe too, that's another reason I see all these guys fail too, because they're not, they're not developing the tribe. They're not having those kind of relationships and they're not, it's like I said, it's just a different atmosphere, you know, but the ones that do are the most successful. Mm-hmm. When you walk into the office and everybody is together as a team, it's great, you know, but when they're all individuals, you know you've got a problem already because there's so much turmoil going on it's a it's yeah a, it's a really really good point yeah we i mean it's it's, it's tough you know and i think it comes back to your ego and a lot of times like clear you know the clarity of what they want their actually business to look like um and it's hard and leadership is probably you know leadership is probably one of the hardest things um to learn especially if you're not um into personal development and you're self-aware of your all your blind spots um, cause you get, so, you know, for me, I, at times I get so, um, like in the, the military and the Marines, they would call it like a uh, front sight focus. Like all you can see is down the barrel of your gun. Uh, and that ends up getting you killed cause you're not, you, know, you can't see what's going on around you. You're so focused on one thing that it ends up getting you killed. Cause you can't, you can't see the big picture of the battlefield, what's actually going on. So as you're focused on this one thing, you know, somebody sneaking up behind you or to the side of you. And taking you out and that's just the same thing in business um if you're not pulled from the day-to-day um technician role you can't see the whole picture of your business 
and what's going right or wrong with it and how do you grow that and 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 what is your competitors doing sneaking up to your side you know to your side to take you out um you know and you don't see that coming that's exactly that happens constantly i just i really love the part about you know somebody can be really good at something it's like i got we'll just say i can't say the field but or because they actually know who it is but they uh, let's just say they're in transportation okay i had a person recently that come to me and they said you know what I've been doing this for 26 years. I understand everything you know, about how to do it. He said, but you know what? I don't understand how to run it. I don't understand how to do financial. I don't know how to do all these things. And so opened himself up, you know, threw the ego out to the side, said, you know, I, I got to meet him here. He's actually here about an hour or so. But he just said, you know, I don't understand. He said, but I want to learn, yep. you know, and that's all it takes in being able to, to understand is that he understands what the other guys are doing. And you'll understand some of the, 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 the core the core principles for everything. So a lot of those owners, that, that happens. You know, they're really good at doing a certain thing, but forget everything else that goes with it or become oblivious to it. And it, it happens to all of us. I mean, yep. We all become oblivious to certain things, but, you know, but, you know, this, you're, you're right. Because, you know, if he just focused just on that, let's say transportation side yep. of it. If he just focused on that, he's still going to get, I like said, competitors are going to get more creative. They're doing different things. Just like, you know, transportation, we always we got very creative when it was the toughest times. Because when I was in transportation, it was during the Great Recession. And I mean, we finding freight was just, it was very, very difficult. I mean, you're having a big bar to find freight, mm -hmm. to be able to get creative, to service customers, to be able to, to do it and, and they would they cut your throat for 10 cents a mile and now it's the opposite yeah they're dying to find people yep. so i mean it's it's funny you know but, but they didn't see it that way they 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 weren't burn a lot of bridges by cutting somebody for 10 cents a mile five cents a mile back years ago and now today it still is effective <laughs> yeah i mean it's, so, it's true it's true um that i mean it's you know, I think it starts, you know, it all comes down to your personal development, you know, as you grow from like, you might've mastered that technician role, you know, like the, I think it's Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, where the 10,000 hour rule, it takes to mastery something it takes 10,000 hours. Well, you've mastered being a technician, but have you mastered being a manager leader? You know, hadn't, you know okay, well now you've got to learn, there's another 10,000 hours to learn that role. And then, okay, now from there, you know, I, there's a, uh, like I look at, um, a pyramid it's a pyramid you know the first you got to learn to do it yourself that's the first uh, step in leadership is I can do it myself I can lead myself I don't have to worry about anyone else I can lead myself that's my first step journey in leadership okay I can wake up on time I can show up to work on time I can do what I'm supposed to do I can um, make decisions without having to go to someone I can be a leader to myself okay the next step is okay can I lead just one person in my organization now can I teach someone you know, the things that I know and have them do it. And can I lead them to make them a, lead, a better leader? Okay. And then the next step is that, you know, that's the middle of the pyramid. And then the third step is now you can lead an organization, you know, cause now I'm creating leaders under me. If I did it right, I created leaders under me. I know how to create leaders and then they can create leaders and it magnifies. Um, but, you know, it's like our ego gets in our way, like you said, it gets in our way from I'm the master and nobody can do it as good as me. So I continue to do it. And I'm super frustrated that this person I've got, you know, 20,000 hours of making pies. And this one person come in has only made one pie in their life and they can't make it as good as me. I'm super frustrated with them. And I take, and I push them out of the way because I micromanage them and I do everything for them. Cause, and then you never, you never have the ability to grow because of that. Because your ego, you can't lead. You you haven't took the time to master leading, which is 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 extremely hard. Right, people they don't focus enough. They, they, their ego gets in the way, and, and it, like the old school, you know, mythology. Basically, people always feel threatened by it, you know. Like you're talking about developing leaders, and that's what we need to be doing: mm -hmm. teaching, developing leaders, developing people, and investing. I mean, instead of doing that. They want to keep people down. They're always afraid somebody's going to take their job or take yep. their position. The thing is, if you're always afraid of that, you'll never grow. You can never, you know, lead it, you know, a large organization because, you know, you're never going to be the most important person. 
That's right. You know, and then once you accept that, yep. you, you know, your frontline people are the ones that are, you know, they're turning the revenue. You may have the idea, but you know, it's, you, you, if you, if you understand you're not the most important person to be successful, then you understand, you get it. But if, if you, everybody, you know, people don't understand they, they think they're the most important person and they're, they're just not, they're That's not, right. you know, you know, just well, think about this. Just like the other day, I, you know, I've had several bad experiences retail wise. Well, that hurts their profits because they're because they're not they're, their front line people are not taking care of because they're not developing. They're not, yep. they're not spending time to do that. And so I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm I'm so important up here, but yet not focusing on where the revenue is actually coming in. You know, it's like going to a restaurant and getting terrible service. Same thing, you know. You got to develop, you got to have expectations and be able to develop even, you know, your servers need to be, you know, there needs to be leadership and they need to understand the hierarchy and be able to grow. And that's questions that people need to be asking on the front side too. I mean, you know, what, you know, what do you want to do? What's your ambitions, you know, and go from there, you know, because, you know, I've seen people not get hired because they, they, they were highly ambitious and they were, you know, looking at an entry level job because guess what? The, the interviewer felt threatened. Yep. Don't be threatening my people. I mean, you need to, you know, want to see people be successful. That's all I do every day, all day. Yep. Is try to help people become more successful, love what they do, and make more money because I want to see people do well. And I don't understand why somebody would not want to see others do well because it's not a. We're not in competition. We need to, you know, like you said, everybody. You need to work as a tribe and work yep. together. You know, turn off the TV. Turn off the. Yep. <laughs> get to work. <laughs> Be present with your family and your friends. Your well, friends. I think it's just coming from that abundance mindset, you know, um, just having that abundance mindset of, hey, we, you said it best earlier, we're in the people business. Every business is in the people business. You know, if you own a business, your people are your employees, um, you know, because they're servicing your customers. You know, if you, if you work in a business, then the customer is your people, you know, you're servicing them. So we are in the people business and uh, people, people equal profit. You know, because, you know, because the bigger, the better the relationship you get, the more profit you'll have. The better you get leading them, the more profit you'll have because uh, the better service they'll provide. Um, I mean, you said it best when you said we are in the people business and that's the business we're in. Um, so tell us you know, one piece of advice that, that someone's either gave you that changed your life or you've gave someone that's helped them change their life. A guy named Bo gave me some advice years ago. It made me understand something. I was always in too big of a hurry. And Bo told me, it's, he said, he said Brady, you got to remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. He said, no matter what you're doing, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, and it kind of made me think about things a little different. I mean, it's coming from a fairly simple guy, but it, but it made me understand, slow down, yep. think about it, because, you know, I, I've seen many people race, and but they get to a certain level, and that's a they, they can't go anymore. Just, yep. poof, poof. So instead of racing, if you actually learn something and work your way up, you can grow. So that was some of the best advice that I received because it was just, you know, it, it was right in. I was always, you know, just, you know, rushing and you know, trying to be in too big of a hurry. Yep. I agree 100%. That was the, one of the first things they told me when I was in the Marine Corps. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Be fast, but be smooth. I remember to the day, to this day, I always remember that. Um, that's, that's great. Slow down, uh, you know, control what you're doing, know what you're doing, have, you know, have goals, have clarity on where you're going, you know, and tack the day in that direction every day. Um, so let me ask you, so you know, I'm a big fan of Jim Collins and in, in his book, Good to Great, he talks about the BHAG, which is the big, hairy, audacious goal. You know, I think everyone should have some big uh, goal that they're pushing forward to because it kind of energizes them to attack the day, you know, to get to that. So tell us what kind of what your, your uh, BHAG is moving forward for the next year to two years or three years. Let's say be, I want to I become a global speaker. I'm already, you know, working venture capital groups all over the globe. And so I'm, I'm seeing people on Zoom to talk to them, but I want to want to go speak and I want to share you know, principles of change. And then I, you know, I've got a new book coming out, The Barbecue Shack Theory. Okay. I want to be able to go out and show, you know, share those things globally, not just locally, not just, you know, like I said, I have a, a deal in Las Vegas that's fell through because of the uh, Omicron variant. But, uh, you know, I want to be able to 
be able to grow and, and be able to, you know, have be present and be able to, to speak globally. Love it. Love it, man. That's um, um, more people you get your message out, the more people we can help and the people out there need it. There's a lot of people out there that need that um, in their life to get them going, you know, to get off the couch, to take that first step of, of changing their life. Um, so I'm a big reader. Uh, I always tell people I probably didn't read a book until I was 28, 29. Um, reading has changed my life because it's changed my thinking. It's opened up possibilities and helped me think different um, than I did before. Um, so is there any book out there that's kind of changed your life that kind of kickstart you or anything? Oh, yeah. The <laughs> Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Howard. Yep. Because the obstacle becomes the way. I mean, that's it's, right. It's, I love that because essentially all the obstacles in life, the challenges, that's what makes you. I yep. mean, you know, we, we, we look at them negatively when, you know, all these bad things happen to you, but I mean, they're just obstacles. You know? yep. They're just obstacles that are going to make you, help you grow. And, you know, it, it's, you know, it's an attitude, you know, because I, I think about all the negative things that happen, but guess what? I mean, they're just growing points. They're just points to learn from, you know, and if you learn from those points and, don't make those mistakes you know the obstacle becomes the way it makes you who you are you know, I, I don't get up at 4 30 for no reason that's right i don't get out of training <laughs> i don't you know do the, i don't do all this stuff for no reason i'm not up till three four o'clock in the morning working for no reason yep. you know and it's it's that's all those the obstacles they become the way to what you know to what you want to become yep that's what I like. Um, it made me think of, the, of a quote, uh, without no, without the struggle, there is no reward. Um, and I always like to ask people, like, name one thing that came easy that you're proud of. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, enjoy the struggle because that's, that's where all the, you know, the reward is at the end of it. Well, Brad, I appreciate your time. I know you've got to jump off here and get to another meeting. You know, tell everyone, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, to learn more about you, how, how you could help them. Um, how, how would they get in contact with you? They can contact me at uh, www.bradyoungchange.com. Okay. Or you can email me at brad at bradyoungchange.com. Okay. And can they pick up your book there if they wanted to get your book? They can. They can, okay. they can pick up the, uh, the 10 Rules of Dispatch Business Life, and then Change is available there. The Barbecue Shack Theory will be there soon. I got to get that to the publisher. Nice, so, nice. I look forward to seeing that one. Nice. It, it's really cool. I'll tell you quick on the concept. Basically, all we're doing is you're looking at a barbecue shack and you think about it, you see a shack, but people don't understand how profitable a barbecue shack is. They don't understand that without all the overhead and all the all the you know the space and everything that you know, all that, all the investment, that that's there's highly profitable. So I use that synopsis to analyze businesses, you know, regionally. And locally, you know, even some nationally, compared to what you know that model, you're looking to see if they're they're holding that. Yep. Yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a big believer in profits. The only thing um, that revenue revenue feeds the ego, and profit feeds the family. That's right. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of that. So, <laughs> so man, I appreciate your time. I think everyone out there is going to enjoy listening to, and um, and reach out to Brad if y'all got any questions on how he can help you.